Slimehouse TV, myself, the Orkane. As you can see, we're here at ToyCon UK 2023. It's hectic, the doors have been open just a couple of minutes and already it's flooded with avid Sophobi fans. I can't wait to talk to people about all the cool stuff that they've brought. Let's see how we get on. So all these people are queuing for a lottery. When it comes to Safubi, sometimes the figures are so elusive and so hard to get that you have to put in for a lottery before you're even able to buy it. So they're just announcing a lottery from what I understand and uh, they might be like, I don't know, only five available. This stuff is uh, very, very loved by these people and they will queue a long time to get the thing that they want. Slimehouse TV back again at ToyCon 2023 with Delicious again, Peter, who you'll have seen on this channel before, but never at ToyCon. So, yeah, man, how's your first ToyCon event been? Really good, thank you. It's been, yeah, it's been pretty strong. It's a good vibe, good atmosphere, community as always, yeah. And you're a guy who's just been going from strength to strength. Every time I speak to you now, it feels that like you've just got more and more stuff going on. Every time I speak to you, you're doing different collabs. And how's that been? How's that growth come along, man? Yeah, it's been good. It's as I say, all my work is mostly collabs with the artist side, but I've been trying to do official collabs. Yeah, so, yeah. so rather than bootleg term, approaching artists, musicians, whatever, and try to go official, uh, as opposed to a bootleg. Like the Jay Diller had given the blessing from his mother to yeah, go yeah. ahead. So that's no yeah, one of the biggest achievements so ever. That, that's an official Jay Diller. It is. As well. Yep, yep. I, for I the, the Jay Diller Foundation. You've got. Do you know what I mean? We see a lot of like rock and metal influence in the scene. Yeah. Uh, but I like to see that that uh, street culture coming through as well, which is always so prevalent with your work. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm pretty old, so I think I said it before. I grew up in the golden era. But you're so. not as old as you. You're, you're older well, than yeah. you look, though. Older than that I look. That toy life. It keeps you young. Yes, mate. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. And the, uh, the Lehane figures, they're pretty new as well, right? They are, yeah. This this is cool. The bootleg yes. stuff's cool. It's like got a, like a naughtiness of its own, but when you're getting the official blessing, the stamp of approval, like you can't you can't knock that. Absolutely, yeah. Um, he basically said, um, if no one's getting exploited making a toy, if it's low numbers, he's yeah, cool with yeah. it. And he also gave a blessing for the skateboard. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah, because I mean, when you originally did that, you didn't have the blessing, That's but then correct. you got the blessing. I did. It's so I call it work, which yes. is awesome, man. Yeah. Slimehouse TV back at ToyCon 2023, ToyCon 10, and I'm here with Jedbots. So I've seen your work many times at the events, but we've never actually spoken. Yeah, You're huh? always busy and things, I'm always doing my thing. We've never actually had a conversation until today. So I wanted to just uh, yeah, talk to you about your work, finally get the opportunity Brilliant. to do that. Excellent. So what I love about your stuff is it's so slick. It almost looks like factory engineered. So I just want you to tell me a little bit about your process. Uh -huh. Yeah, like what, how, is it hand sculpted? Is it digital sculpted? Okay. Is it resin? It's, it's a mixture of everything. I do the faces usually are hand sculpted. And then some more of the symmetrical stuff is CAD and a little bit of 3D printing, yeah, yeah. but then everything is then moulded and cast in resin. Some of the pieces I do, I do in cold casting with iron. With, so, with iron? With iron. What, iron. Is this made of metal then? Yeah, it's not made of metal, it's made of um, half plastic, half resin, oh, half, okay. half atomised oh, iron. Oh, it's got like iron filings in it or something. That's right, right, yeah, right, yeah. right. So it's like, it's really, really heavy. Can I feel the weight and, of it? Yeah, is that yeah. Okay? And it's got real rust on it. Oh, it is. Yeah, no, it's a really nice feel, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a it's real, lovely, really lovely. nice feel. And are these rubber? Yeah, like the feet so on it's, it. It's a mixture of resin, iron, and then the hair and the boot parts are, are rubber. Yeah. And it's so slick. It's like a cut above, like someone like hand sculpting the, the thing. Like, I mean, obviously you've kind of mastered your craft now. They, they were looking this slick like four or five years ago when I first saw them at, <laughs> at Toy Art and things. Thank you. And uh, that's why I wanted to talk to you a bit about a bit about your process and yeah. they almost look like articulated like they're alive but you're telling me that they're very much like uh, did you used to do the articulated thing? I used to do more yeah. articulated stuff yeah um, I used to say all the joints would be would be would be either magnetic ball joints yeah. or they would be there would be bolts and stuff but I kind of found that I preferred creating the poses yeah, and yeah. the characters of the the characters I was creating the pose was important and so I've, I've started to do a lot more 
rigid stuff now, right. so I can get the pose right and so that the character can come through. Okay, so we're here with Faco. And you might recognise Faco off these videos before because we've done a few interviews at this point, haven't we? But a couple of days ago, I received something very interesting in the mail. Then I texted, didn't I? And I said, what's this? I'm intrigued. And he's like, all will be revealed at ToyCon. So I found out today that he's got his own gumball machine. So first of all, tell me a little bit about where this idea came from. I just did all the talking that I understand that, but I wanted to give you a good introduction. Yeah, yeah. So um, I bought the machine on eBay about a year ago. Right. And, um, I've always had it in my head that I wanted to make a gumball machine. And then it was a case of like figuring out how the hell do you sculpt anything that small, and getting the capsules, sorting out tokens, and just the whole process took at least six months from start to finish. And then when you were here last time and you mentioned the gachapon machines, yeah. I was already thinking about okay. that by that point. You know, growing up, we have one of these outside the laundrettes over the road from our house. Yeah. So we'd go and buy Garbage Pail Kids stickers yeah, yeah. And, and the figures. Those little figures, which they from, never do with yeah, these yeah. anymore. Like when you, yeah, whenever I look at a gumball machine in England, it's always just some trash. It's not like, I mean, it was trash then, but they're not like little sculpted monsters like you've got. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it was um, it just kind of, you know, it's kind of like a love letter to to that really and to like the 80s and I just wanted it to have this real feeling and nostalgia as soon as you came up and you put the coin in yeah. and you turn the machine in it makes the clicking noise and it's all about that shall we do it, Let's do it so if I put this in this this very specific coin specific shaped coin in there turn it we get a little we get a little something old school style and hidden in there are there's four silver editions so there's one of each in silver, in silver and there will only ever be one of each really yeah. so then so the, chase like the chaser ones yeah do you want to come round rocks well uh is this right well look at that it works like a charm as well so we've got first of all faco hq i think I, whoa this is crazy and you've sculpted all these as well yes yeah, so there's two two digital sculpts and two hand sculpts nice <laughs> Oh, it's like a fake old building with a giant ant kaiju attacking it. That's so cool. Slimehouse TV, myself, Theo Kane, back at ToyCon 2023, ToyCon 10. We're just here with PJ Constable Creations, and he's uh, going to talk us through some of the, the new stuff that he's brought this year. You were yeah. telling me about this new thing that you've made. I'm really interested in this, where you've got uh, a book where you can change the antlers and the mask on Oh, it. yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah, really can I like bring this. Jake in as well, because yeah, he's the co-creator yeah, yeah. of this? Of yeah, come in, Jake. Come in, Jake. This is Jay Kish. You'll just have to stand close to me, so when my mic picks us both up. So this is Jay Kish. Me and him developed this. Pro, uh, project together. Um, it's called Ruffles. Zen Ruffles, would you like to talk about the character? Yeah, so from? the character Ruffles I've actually been making over the years. It's just kind of naturally occurred with like this little monster design that I've liked. Like I made a coloring book based on it and I've made several characters based on it. So and this is a design that I made called Zen Ruffles. So it's got the calming Zen face. Yeah, the original yeah. illustration is on yeah, the, so that's the, the lid of the box. There that it's based on. And right. I saw this yeah. and I got super, super inspired. And I was like, you know what, bro? That would make an amazing toy. And I wanted to sculpt it using traditional sculpting methods. Yeah, yeah. So I sculpt it in uh, Super Sculpey. And then I sanded it down, made, resin, uh, made silicon molds, cast it in resin. And the functionality behind this piece is it's that... snapping so satisfying yeah, as well. It's so yeah, it's so good. Yeah. It's like some ASMR, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, the faces come off. And we wanted to create like a really simple yet versatile piece. So 
Eventually, we'll have different faces, maybe from different artists with different sculpts. Yeah, there's but an this, example there from yeah. an artist actually, which is uh, Callum. Bold Raccoon. For Bold Raccoon. Yeah, yeah, I saw one of these over there. Yeah, yeah. so he, he's made the version, and actually, the faces can be swapped. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it, let's do a little swap. Switch we... it up. <laughs> Love it. Oh, yeah, I'm finding this year I'm seeing people bringing a lot of stuff with like functionality and playability and I'm loving seeing like people taking it from that next level from a resin, like a simple thing, maybe a exactly, bit of movement yeah. to we're getting like play features with them now. It's not enough now to really just like focus on doing one-off pieces, like those yeah. are special, but if we're tr really trying to create a staple piece that has yeah. longevity in the toy scene, something that other artists can do something with, that we can do stuff with and build on, and like, yeah, this is just the simple um, OG iteration. So OG red and OG blue. And then our first artist Artists version, let's, let's give them a little swap. It don't back. get more collaboration than that, Gary. <laughs> yeah. Let's swap faces. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the fact that you can like even display it, like turn it around so you can look like, have a bit of a cheeky expression on his face. And the antlers are like plug and play as well. So they come out. These are 3D printed by the guy who designed this piece. Right, Scott right. Raccoon. We're going to be able to allow artists to actually design their own faces, their own antlers, so there's so much versatility here. Mm. Yeah, I love it, I love it. Perfect way to collab with other artists. Exactly, Give me yeah. some antlers and a dot mask if it fits our face, if it fits our head, our body. And this guy is a, a professional with branding and packaging. So we've got the whole printed logo on the front. Yeah, and then even the bottom, we've got like a little QC sticker. We've got like the credits of everyone who was involved. It really looks like it's got something tasty inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it comes out. We've got like, oh, let me show you one that. That's actually yeah, that's here. fully packaged. So this one's got the the main Love one it. in there, and then the antlers come marked left and right. Packed up separately. Packed yeah. up Those little extra touches that yeah, go a long way, don't they? Yeah, they do. Definitely, so. and it's just the feeling of when you're opening the piece. It's like a little ice cream tub exactly. or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The quality control levels were high, so I thought a sticker was required. Because mm -hmm. PJ is very fussy about quality. Oh, yeah, there was. <laughs> well, so he, told many... me, he, said, he told me this early on, it's, uh, it shows. Yeah. yeah. So many stages throughout the process. We have to check, like, if, is the base smooth enough? Is, uh, does this have any flecks of paint on it or anything yeah. like that? Because with something simple like this, any imperfection really yeah, stands. Yeah. One little thumbprint's going to ruin it's the whole vibe. It's glaringly obvious. It's, it's, and like, the fact that it's really smooth, if the light hits it a certain way and you see like an imperfection in the surface texture, that shows up as well. So it was a bit of a nightmare trying to get everything as consistent. <laughs> I've, I've learned a lot and my eye has improved massively yeah. with Sensei PJ. Like Sen just, Sensei just PJ. looking over me and I'm scared, like, have I sanded it properly? And he's like, <laughs> No, do it again, I'm like, oh. <laughs> But I made, um, yeah, 15 of each color. Yeah. So, yeah, but we're gonna have more additions, maybe like a, a seasonal variant. Yeah, so yeah, spring, yeah. summer, autumn, yeah. winter, and then the antlers will have like different, like flowers or leaves or something on them, or look like decaying yeah, branches. We've got loads of ideas. Yeah. I bet, I bet, I can so see it. Excited now. I can't wait to see what I get next then. So I didn't see that on there. So there's more than four. No, no, so that's that one. Is that in? Oh, of course it is. Okay. I was I was looking at it wrong, and we got one more. I love this man. This is uh, I, I love how unique it is and how different it is. You only get this at Toycon. Oh, and then we've got this thing here, the mouth of hell. So they dub. Are these all made in resin? Yeah. So he's hand sculpted, Faker yeah. HQ's digital sculpt, and then this one, this is hand sculpt. Ooh. But then he's got, I made a digital sculpted mouthpiece that goes into it and the idea is he's like a walkie-talkie so you can talk to the devil yeah yeah and then you oh, no. can like so you, you can like tell him your problems he'll solve your problems and then you can like swap your soul yeah. for whatever oh i love that they've all got these uh, little backstories and stuff like you you never create anything without giving it such a good story oh to god go no there's, there's always a story yeah everything's always got a story what's the newest release you've got you've got a um, new, the newest so release. yeah i'll rip off your head and shit down your neck yes yes man Stand piece by of me. shit has a thousand yeah, eyes yeah. so yeah uh, my favourite character from everyone's favourite film. Yeah. We have reached out to Corey, so if you're watching, tap us up. Um, but this was a collaboration with Lesky Rico, a Russian artist who works in this kind of... That's beautiful artwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. orange, uh, it's yellows, It's almost like blues. old school brush inking, but, with, but digital, so you That's can get the colour that you wouldn't normally get with the brush because it exactly would be black, you've got the blue. Right, yeah. So, um, and the paint job, and that's really nice, man. Like, thank you, man. Like, even from I can see the progression, even from when you first started doing it to now, your paint jobs are just like you're knocking it out of the park yeah, now. Yeah, trying to do more washes, more dry brushes. Just that uh, you, I know you're a fellow Warhammer yeah, nerd, yeah, we I, grew I, up I with that. So, yeah, yeah. um, the Citadel 
do you feel like you've got to a point now where you've like mastered your style and you've mastered your craft and like you really know like which direction you're wanting to go and run with it? Because as long as I've known you, which is a few years now, yeah. it's always been like little bits of different stuff. It but has. I feel like now you've really found your voice with it. Yeah, Would I you think agree? so. I think, as you said, going back to like the Warhammer thing, I think I've got found my style now and, yeah, and yeah. very much. The, the 10 centimeter figure as well seems where I'm most comfortable at. Yeah, yeah, like the three Definitely. and three quarter size on this card back and the yeah, really nice card stock. Yeah, everything about your stuff's looking so professional now. It's just a pleasure to, to keep seeing it. Thank like, you, man, and uh, thank you for the support. It's always a pleasure to see, you, to see you, bro. Wait, wait, wait for the awkward thing. Cabin. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. Back again at ToyCon UK 2023, and I'm here with Emergency Toys. This guy's work really stood out to me. I had to get a few words with him on camera about it. These magnificent things, first of all, tell me a little bit about where this idea came from. I'm Emergency Toys from Paris, France. Yeah, you're from Paris, yeah. And uh, these are toy boxes, I call them toy boxes, and uh, these are plastic uh, boxes in two parts, fully sculpted. Insane. In, uh, 360 degrees, and you can turn the the top parts and bottom parts, and open that. And that's where the and, secrets and go, in, the inside, treasures. Inside, you can put your treasures and yeah, your, yeah. your stuff and something like that. Uh, do you, how have you sculpted these? Is it a digital sculpt? Yeah, these are digital sculpts, then 3D printed, and we turn it into plastic after. Yeah, yeah. And a uh, really nice finish on all of them, even though like you've got a full color one, the yeah. black and white, the brown, it all looks nice equally, in, no matter what color I seem to see it in. Yeah, these are all painted by myself. Really? And, uh, no way. The, the initial edition it comes in the only one color, and then I, I did some customs and uh, special yeah. editions in, uh, in vivid color or black and white or many different ways. And what I really like about your other pieces that you've got, you've got a lot of playability with them, yeah. functions and things. Like this guy we've got, he's uh, the little vampire with the melon. Yeah, this guy's... Uh, the vegan vampire. The vegan vampire. Vegan vampire. Yeah. So he's a vampire, but he, he only eats apples. Oh, he's got apple. It's not a melon. Sorry. Yeah, I, see, apple. I see the apple he's sat on now. Yeah. His yeah. name is Apple Knife. So you, you can see the little yeah, the little teeth marks. The little teeth marks on the apple. I have another edition, which is uh, the Apple Knife's blood orange. Blood orange. That's so, what I was gonna say. Is it blood so orange? It's an orange, but yeah. it's a blood it's orange. It's blood, but it's blood orange. Okay. I like it. And it's the same story, but with an orange. Back again at ToyCon 10 2023, just here with Squirkle Kid. So I saw your work because you hit me up on Instagram yeah. and you'd done this mad thing where you dropped toys off all over the UK. Do you want to just tell me a little bit about that for anybody that didn't know about it? Yeah, so basically um, around the UK I hid 200 tins that basically gave you a free version of this toy. The big one? Um, yeah, the big one. No way. So uh, I think around 170 of them were claimed. A lot of them were lost to just time and yeah, yeah. animals and stuff finding them. Um, if you were in the UK, there was one, I think, 20 minute drive away from you, no matter where, no matter you, where you were. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I've met a bunch of people today that have found one. I've saw, I actually signed a small kid's one. He came with his oh, dad because they went out. It was great. Um, I basically did it because I kind of wanted just to attach a lot of the toys to an event. Yeah. I wanted it to be basically attached to some a memory that someone has. And, and the story of the dad and his son, I, I think I have about five or five or more of them yeah, of yeah people saying they loved going out with their kids find this stuff talk about that forever won't they when yeah, you look exactly. at that thing yeah. yeah i find here when it comes to like the, the toy art scene people like to market their stuff in a clever way and everyone has their like their own different ways yeah. of thinking about it and then obviously the way you thought about that was genius yeah uh, yeah hopefully it works out um, i'm trying at the minute tr to get like different events uh, say like the manchester marathon or something right, right. just get like a subsec like maybe a vip you get a running toy, you yeah. get whatever. I've done 
the, the guy that does my manufacturing is one of my friends. They want to do like a magnet one so it can float. Right, oh, so no it'll be way. smaller, it'll be like an eight inch instead of 11 inch, but so it, okay, it can float. But I wanted to get it a skydiving one going, so. The thing is, when you tell me that as well, I kind of feel that like, sorry to cut you off there, That's but right. just while you were, my, yeah. I was thinking about it, when you tell me that, like I'm going to do one floating on magnets, yeah. a lot of people, if they said that to me, I'd be like, well, I'll believe it when I see it. But, but when I've seen the quality of the stuff that you're creating, I think, do you know what? I, I can't wait to see yeah. it because I know he's going to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This one I really like. His name is Bob Lemon, and uh, he's, a, he's a bad guy who is very naughty, but uh, he has a lemon hat. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> And you can crush real lemons because it's yeah, made yeah, it's, it's made it's in plastic. It's functional as an actual lemon squeezer. I made some le lemon juice with, yeah, uh, yeah, with his hat. Yeah. And here you get the Match Max, which is a, a Matchbox Man, and you can you can close yeah, it, I love it. close its head and remove the and adjust the position to have a different expressions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, I like uh, that with just the eyes poking through. Okay, and, and finally hide completely and or remove completely. And remove. And, and, and uh, do you know the process of how you get stuff made? Is it uh, factories in Hong Kong or you, do you do uh, some stuff yeah, I work with, closer uh, to Paris? Uh, or? I work with factories in China. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, in China. And, uh, and I, I asked them to send me some plastic parts in separate, separated parts. Yeah, yeah. And after I, I painted, painted myself all the parts and glue them together to make it right, different right. So, so when you get it, it's blank and you do the paintwork yourself. Yeah. That's incredible because the paintwork on these looks like it was uh, done in a factory. It doesn't look like yeah. you did it by hand. Very yeah. impressive. But some of them are totally produced, but some of them are partially uh, painted. Right. Is this your first time at ToyCon? Yeah, it's my first time. How have you found the event? Yeah, it's very, very nice. And, uh, I like to, to see all the different artists and to share with them, talking about some techniques and future projects. And it's, uh, I am the only French, but uh, I'm glad to be here because uh, I represent the French Art Toys Connection. And so well, because your stuff's so well made. Yeah. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so yeah, much. And you I can't much. wait to see uh, what yeah. you come up with next. Thank you, dude. Thank you. They're so lifelike, like they've got so much character to them. What are your like inspirations when it comes to this stuff? What's the kind of thing that you like grew up loving that like, well, th that is like bleeds into your work? Well, um, I kind of see these guys as Star Trek meets Smurfs. Okay. So they, yeah, they, they, they yeah. yeah. So these are they're all life size. These robots. They're replicas of life uh, life size replicas of robots. Okay. So they would. And so if if it was alive, it would be that it scale. Be oh, that I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So um, so yeah, and they travel around the universe. Um, getting into all sorts of adventures. So yeah, that's kind of my, you know, Star Wars and all that. Yeah, 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 I, was, yeah. I was, I was around to see the first movie when it first came out. Yeah. So um, I've lived up, grown up like that, like most people. So because yeah. I love all those like cute Tommy robots and things that you got back in the eighties and stuff. Like not yeah. the tin robots, but it all moved to plastic. Yeah. And I, I get a little bit of that vibe from them as well because uh, because yeah, yeah, I, I love yeah, that retro yeah, vibe. And you built this awesome diorama display piece. Yeah. I need to ask you a little bit about that because okay. again, that looks like it's like a machine engineered kit that you've bought, but no, you've made that you <laughs> you've made that yourself. No, yeah, that's that's a little bit of three D printing, a lot of MDF and bits and pieces stuck on it. The idea behind these is that I'm, I'm, I'm putting these little dioramas in picture frames right, right. to hang on the wall. Yeah, yeah. I think people are running out of shelf space now. So oh yeah, you I'm and me both, to, yeah. You don't need shelf space for my stuff, you can hang it No, that, that's on the wicked, wall. that's wicked. <laughs> and, so, uh, and I love this one, I know we need to wrap it up, but I, I love these ones with these acrylic yeah, rods. Just tell me a little bit about that one. Because yeah. that looks like there's more process in balancing it out and everything like... Yeah, there's a little, there's a little bit. The smoky bits are, are quite heavy, so it was right, pretty right. rivet to it. Yeah, what, what you could do is also add lights in there and they, at night yeah, they shine yeah. up and the whole thing glows. But uh, yeah, yeah. And then there's um, the Mickey ears as well. So this is Team Mickey. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that I'm, I that saw I'm that. Producing, so. Well, I absolutely love your work, man. Like I said, Thanks, I've man. seen it many times. I always make a point of filming it at these toy events and putting it in the video. So it's really cool to be able to talk Thanks to you a little bit much. about it. Cheers. Thank you so Thank much. You. Take care, Thank man. You. What is your process for creating this stuff? Is it digital sculpted? Is it hand sculpted? Do you send it off to a factory? Is it so how the, from drawings? Yeah, so how the original design came up, I was basically drawing for a couple of days, just trying to figure out a character that was very simple to draw, yeah. but it's complex in like it has to be exact to notice it's the and character. anyone can draw it like exactly it's like it's just a it's just a typical again a square core which is the correct shape for it which is just yeah. a rounded square um, and again just a zigzag mouth 
crazy eyes. Originally, I wanted the eyes each to be unique, so like they'd magnetize on. Oh, really? Really? And each person who got one would be unique, but my match actor was like, "That's going to cost you." Yeah, yeah, for sure. An absurd amount of money, so. I, I kind of just. So was you actually yeah. giving them away, or was it like a lottery with a ticket when someone found no, that no, token? No, they, they, they literally just it, yeah, it away. Yeah, they were just giving away. No way. So, so there's. Got to be the most generous guy in toys, and I get a lot of stuff. Give me for free and stuff, but like that's insane what you give away there. Well, I mainly did it as well because it was a. Uh, it was during Christmas, the original drop, right, so it right. was like everyone's having an awful time with the cost of living. I was just like, mm. I might as well give away a bunch of these, yeah, and just yeah. hopefully it's people insane. can. Uh, can can I uh, pick one of the boxes up and just yeah, show you? Yeah, you can show you. Sure. I don't want sealed unless you want that one. So yeah, the sealed, sealed one yeah. I liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, so, perfect. So, well, this is it. This is how they come in the box, and even this like cardboard that you've got here that's like being yeah. cut with the face of the Squirkle Kid on there. Like it's crazy. Like what 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 did you do in terms of getting these produced? So these again, these, these are actually produced in in China. There's, there's actually a delay with getting this produced really? because they couldn't really find like no factory really does this zigzag no, no, line. Yeah. So this isn't like it a was pre-bought a box that you've printed onto. <laughs> yeah, you've, exactly. Like, Design engineered your own box yeah. for this thing. It was a, it was a nightmare basically to get done, but I was like, I kind of have to have like something unique yeah. to really go with it. Originally, the design was actually going to be a green camo, so it was going to be fully green camo, so you could have him hiding behind yeah, yeah. the bush. But then I was like, almost oh. like when you found the, the yeah, thing exactly. That head, yeah. So like, if you you could display the box with the toy, because it'd be like yeah. looking around a bush. So. Um, but I ended up changing it because I was thought in the future I'll do different variants. I actually had a different variant I wanted to bring uh, in a different pose, but it didn't get. It's not yeah, ready yeah. in time, so. Um, well, it's so yeah. cool, man. This is like your first introduction into making toys yeah. and being at Toy Art. Have you found the event? Oh, it's been good so far. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I basically the majority of people who have spoken to me have just spoken to me that they've already got one. Yeah, <laughs> so really. Because they've I've actually one. sold more shirts oh, than I've really? sold anything else. So. That's well, the, uh, yeah, I love your work, man. It's so fresh, and I can't wait to see what direction you take it in. Magnet, skydiving, whatever is yeah. next. I'm ready for it. Thanks. Nice one, brother. I appreciate the, it. Yeah. You have a good day. Thank you. What I wanted to ask you is, I know you've got all this stuff that we've seen a few times before at the Toy Cons. I've always yeah, filmed yeah. that. I always love it. And now you're bringing uh, something that you said is like a whole new thing to Toy Con, collaborating yeah, with a friend. How have you found it? Has it been received this year? It's been received really well. Like, of course, the collaboration I did with Muffin Man is the one that flies off. Like, yeah, yeah. People love the Kingfishers. And this is the fourth one I've done in the in the edition. Again, super slick, super cute. It's yeah, like so flawless. Hand painted again, like again with magnets. I yeah, I hand painted, I but it looks magnets. like you've done it in a factory. Like it's that well made. Oh, I yeah, appreciate yeah. that, man. That's really kind. If you told me these get made in a, a factory in Hong Kong, I'd be like, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I can see it. Like, <laughs> well, he's hand painting. The people man. that I look up to are the people who put the most amount of care and attention into those final finishes yeah, yeah, yeah. and really pay attention to those little imperfections or just tightening everything up as much as possible. And this is a new figure that I've brought with me for the first time to this event. It's called Anacon Dunny. So oh, dope. So it's, it's like a, a dunny's head it's a getting dunny eaten. sculpted over. Yeah, it's like a snake eating yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. This is the choke me edition, a bit naughty, a bit, <laughs> a bit 18 plus. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just I, I sculpted over the dunny, made it look like skin was stretching around the forms and really tried to get those curves really nice. It's a little so the bit light gimpish, hits, yeah, but yeah. it's, uh, it's Toy-Con. These are, these are not kids buying toys yeah, here. We're all adults not, here. Yeah, adult <laughs> toys, but not those kind. Mm, you know, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Teetering on the edge, but not quite. <laughs> I love it, man. Well, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Always In fact, let's do it like this, like we're swapping faces. <laughs> let's do it like that. Amazing. Love it. Thank you, boys. Thank you. <laughs>so we just come out of the screen in the ninja turtles it was absolutely awesome a perfect way to end toycon 2023 
the real head exclusive Safubi was popping. The seats were full. It was absolutely rammed and everybody enjoyed it with a round of applause at the end. A fantastic way to end ToyCon. I can't wait till next year. It's always a blast. Shouts to ToyCon for letting us film and until next time, I'm gone. Pow! If you enjoyed this video today, then please don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to find out more information about ToyCon and any of their upcoming events, then make sure you head over to toyconuk.com. If this is your first time checking out Slimehouse TV and you enjoyed the vibe of this video, then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out the henchback catalogue that I've been amassing on this channel over the years. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite toy was this year and if you saw anything in this video's footage that you would have not been able to leave without coming home with. I've also added a list of all this year's vendors down below, so go check that out if you saw anybody's work that you'd like to support. I'm sure they'd all really appreciate it. Make sure that you also keep a look out for the next ToyCon video that I'm going to be dropping, covering all the things that I picked up personally. I got some great deals and amazing gifts this year too, so I'm really looking forward to showing them you all in that video, so stay tuned for that one as well. And lastly, I just want to say a massive thank you to ToyCon UK and Unbox Industries and everybody else that shows us so much love at these events. It's so cool to be a part of them and me and my girl Roxy that cover this event really do appreciate it. So with all that said and done, I'm Theo Kane, this is Slimehouse TV and I'll catch you in that next video, but until then, I'm gone.